hours. Watch the fine print GST special all week only on Bloomberg Quint. Good morning, you're watching All You Need to Know on Bloomberg Quint. I'm Darshan Mehta. If you're looking at what's happened from the global markets, the, the handover hasn't been the most impressive, at least from the US markets, the Dow Jones, the S&P and NASDAQ, all of them ended much lower. Uh, Europe did extremely well for itself, but uh, coming back to Asia, most of the Asian markets are trading with a negative bias. Even if you're looking at what's happening with the SGX Nifty, it is indicating a downtick of 26 points post a cut of almost 100 points that we saw yesterday. All the ADRs ended with a negative bias. Uh, the worst of performance has been coming from ICICI Bank and Tata Motors, which have been down over the past few days, uh, despite you know all the positive news that have come in. Vedanta Vipro also down in trade most of the ADRs in fact all ended with a negative bias now if you're taking a look at what's happened as far as uh, the benchmark and and the broader markets are concerned the nifty was down 100 points so 180 points down on the nifty bank it was much worse as far as the mid caps and small caps were concerned the mid cap was down one and a half percent the small cap was down almost uh, over 2.3 percent in trade so clear pain was seen on the mid cap and the only sector that managed to do well yesterday was the IT sector and that was on account of how the rupee is uh, depreciating against the dollar now uh, these were the two sectors that didn't do well energy uh, weakness was seen on the oil marketing companies because of crude and the rupee uh, equation has played played out for them and reliance has not been performing the PSU banking space has been rather weak uh, it's down almost two and a half percent in trade yesterday now uh, if you look at, uh, take a look at what's happened this month only two sectors have given positive returns the pharma index which has outperformed and the nifty IT which is out which is up almost three percent but look at the high beta counters the real estate the infra the small cap all of them down over eight percent in trade now even if you take a look at what's happened this week itself uh, uh, in the past three days the nifty it index is up almost 1.7 percent but look at the cuts that have come in on the index indices like the real estate psu and energy down anywhere between four to five percent in trade so clear weakness is seen on some of the sectors uh, stocks at a 52 week high um, these are the high value counters which are doing well for itself Bata, Dabur, Hexaware, Infosys, TCS, Indusin, Jubilant Food, HUL. So these are the counters that keep on going much higher and there are counters which keep on going lower. Uh, those are the PSU banks which haven't done well over the past few days. Uh, surprisingly, Seat, Jet Airways, uh, uh, which were moving significantly over the past few quarters have, have actually gone to the 52 week low. You have counters like Motila, Loswal, which has actually corrected 50% from its all time high. Madhusan, Sumi, Tata Motors. So there seems to be a lot of issues as far as some of these companies are concerned. Now, flows, surprisingly, yesterday, despite a 100-point drop on the Nifty, FIS, DIS, both of them were buyers. FIS sold in almost 3,600 crores in the cash market. DIS have bought in almost 11,500 crores in the cash market, indicating that it's a liquidity-driven uh, market. Uh, Wicks moving up, given the fact that the Nifty was moving down, but still is, is not at elevated levels. What contributed on the positive side, it was HDFC Bank. If HDFC Bank was, was not there, would have seen another 20, 30-point cut on the Nifty. ICICI, Reliance, BPCL were the main contributors for the fall in Nifty. It's expiry today and uh, the Nifty and the Bank Nifty ahead of the expiry are looking extremely weak. The Nifty was down 1%, the Bank Nifty was down 7 tenths of a percent and uh, the rollovers have been rather weak this time around. So the rollovers are clearly not coming this time around. What happened yesterday was that the call and put writers became extremely aggressive which gives an indication that 10,700 which was very very critical support was broken yesterday and at 10,700 and 10,800 positions were cracked in trade. Now if you take a look at the total open interest you can see that the expiry probably will happen between the 10,600 and 10,700 mark in trade leg looks very unlikely because of the resistance that 10,700 or 10,800 will be taken out in trade today now as far as uh, uh, the stocks in the band are concerned the, the same stocks continue they and JP Associates in fee beam you have counters like Wokard, Gen Irrigation and IDBI Bank the only exception is Crompton Grief Power which goes out of the FNO band the Nifty PCR the bank Nifty PCR both of them came down given the fact that the, how the market has been reacting negatively uh, to the recent developments in news uh, apart from it some of the stocks that I want to point out NBCC had a fresh 52 week low continues to grind in lower you have uh, you have a DCB bank which continues to grind in lower it saw a drop of almost 2% Adani Enterprises which saw a drop of almost 10% in trade yesterday and the only exception yesterday was Tech Mahindra which was the biggest gainer on the nifty that was up almost 4% in trade so that's what's happened in our markets but uh, let's go across to Bloomberg's Paul Allen for all the top international headlines.
Minneapolis Fed Reserve President Neil Kashkari says he believes U.S. inflation is legitimately moving towards the central bank's target. In an exclusive interview, he told Bloomberg that with inflation about 1.8 percent, he's comfortable with moving towards a neutral rate, which could be one or two hikes away. He also says the Fed should determine a neutral unemployment rate and stick to it. I think one simple thing is don't ratchet it up. You know, if we if we figure out where it is, maybe it's four and a half, maybe it's four, maybe it's three and a half. If we in this cycle say, okay, well it really is three and a half or three seven, I say the next time there's a recession, let's just hold it there yeah. and let's operate monetary policy using that assumption rather than the reflex of ratcheting it back up. New Zealand Central Bank held interest rates at a record low but signalled it's prepared to cut them if needed as economic growth slows and inflation remains below target. Governor Adrian Orr says in a statement that the official cash rate will remain at one and three quarter percent for now. Economic growth has been weaker than the RBNZ expected and business confidence has slumped to a seven month low. Bank of England Governor Mark Carney says time is running out to remove a Brexit threat to as much as $127 trillion of derivative contracts. The contract continuity issue could cause havoc in financial markets when Britain leaves the bloc next March. Carney says the UK has announced steps towards a solution, but so far the EU has not reciprocated. The UK government's temporary permission regime would provide the UK side of the solution. The EU has not yet indicated their solution to these fundamental issues, which would be expected to have more material impacts on the costs and availability of finance on the continent in the un unlikely event of a disorderly Brexit. Apple and Samsung have reached a settlement in their US patent battle, putting an end to a seven-year fight over smartphone designs. Terms of the accord weren't immediately disclosed. The string of lawsuits started in 2011 when Apple sued Samsung for allegedly copying the design of the iPhone. The settlement follows a retrial in May in which a jury awarded Apple $539 million in damages. Global news 24 hours a day on air and at TikTok on Twitter, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Paul Allen. This is Bloomberg. I think there's going to be a lot of upward pressure on oil. I mean, look, uh, right now there's a little bit of prompt overhang still in the Atlantic Basin, which we are clearing off because we had really high U.S. exports in the past. Uh, but once that clears up, I mean, you are looking at substantial upward pressure. I mean, there's no reason why we couldn't trade into the 90s, even probably higher by year end, uh, given the volume of oil that we're talking about that could be lost. Um, Amrita, let me bring you over to my chart, which is basically looking at Saudi Arabia planning a pump or to pump a record amount of crude in July. How concerned is the market right now that if the Saudis do increase production, there just won't be enough spare capacity? That's it. That's that's part of the problem. Well, you know, the uh, the other issue with uh, what happened yesterday is that Saudi Arabia were putting out different numbers every hour almost, right? It was uh, 10.6 at some point, became 10.8, became 11. I think the market really thinks it's panicking. Uh, and like you said, I think firstly, even if we assume that uh, Iranian exports are not going to go to zero, we don't think it's going to go to zero. We think it should be about a million barrels per day. That's still a drop of about one and a half uh, to 1.6 million barrels per day from current uh, from sorry May level. Uh, Saudi Arabia can only increase by about one sustainably. Of course, it can do more uh, in over time. Uh, it basically leaves us with no spare capacity at a time when Iran isn't the only issue. Venezuelan production is falling, Angola, Libya, Nigeria. There are lots and lots of issues everywhere in the world. Um, what more can Saudis do? Back to Indian equity markets. Hi, this is Nikki. And stock of the day today is Mercator. Well, the company has received the mining license to operate in the state of Gujarat for 20 years, likely to exploit 23 million barrels of recoverable oil. The field development plan, FDP, gets uh, the Director General Hydrocarbon approval with this. The company is expected to start the, uh, the production as soon as possible. Uh, the guidance uh, is expected, uh, the commercial production is expected to begin by Q2 FY19. That's what it had put out in the presentation in June. Uh, to ramp up the production by Q4 19, and this is expected 
it to be EBITDA positive right from the time of commercial production. If you look at the timeline that the company had earlier guided, it was back in August 2017 that the commercial viability of this uh, block was explored. Feb 2018, we got an approval for FDP and March, April 2018, there were uh, there were trials which were being conducted uh, conducted for this tra for this production. Now in 2018, the company has received the mining license approval. Q2 FY19, as mentioned, there will be a commercial production and Q4 FY19, we expect this production to ramp up. Well, if you look at the guidance that has been given by the company, that's a fairly decent uh, a place, I'd say. FY18, the revenue was around 974, which is further guided to increase by 1200 to 1300 odd crore in FY19 and further improved by 1450 to 15550 crore in FY20. EBITDA, which stood at around 974 uh, level in FY18, sorry, 142 uh, crore level in FY18 is expected to jump up to 425 to 470 crore. Margins are expected to improve to 30 to 35 percent in FY19 and further improve to 35 to 40 percent in FY20. Also, if you look at the current debt position, that is also expected to come down. The current debt situation stands at 1,435 crore and that is likely to reduce by a good 10 to 15 odd percent for the company. Well, let's shift focus to currency and commodity space. Uh, starting off with Indian rupee, it was a weak session clearly yesterday. It ended for the ended lower for the third consecutive session, uh, which is down nearly six tenth of a percent at 68.64 levels against the dollar, which is its lowest uh, in over 19 months. Remember, the all-time lows for the rupee stands at 68.8625 levels, which was seen uh, last on 24th uh, November 2016. Now, the rupee, along with other Asian currencies has come under pressure in the last few trading sessions on the back of rising crude oil prices, trade war fears, along with a sharp sell-off in the Chinese currency which has happening, which has been happening in the last six trading sessions. The Indian rupee remains the worst performing Asian currency and at the current levels it has depreciated approximately 7% since the start of the year. Well, speaking of the bond market, sovereign bonds declined yesterday as yield on the 10-year uh, benchmark bond ended four basis points higher at 7.87%. In terms of flows into debt market, global funds uh, increased, infused uh, rupee debt holdings uh, for the second consecutive session yesterday, according to NSDL data. Well, on the global front, dollar extended its winning streak for the second straight session and ended six tenths of a percent higher, near uh, 95.30 levels, uh, while euro and pound both slipped uh, nearly eight tenths of a percent against the dollar yesterday. And lastly, speaking of dollar rupee, now it is trading quite volatile at uh, 68.80 levels uh, which is very close to its all-time lows in the non-deliverable forward market so traders are expecting RBI to intervene in today's currency market maybe at the open or uh, during the day to defend the currency movement uh, having said that let's shift focus to commodity space uh, good morning Jayesh what cues are you picking up since oil is at all-time highs that's right, uh, Saloni. Uh, in fact, oil prices have uh, surged more than 3% overnight. And this was the second straight 3% uh, plus move that we got uh, for, uh, you know, oil uh, for WTI. Now, this is on the back of uh, uh, the inventory drop that we were expecting and uh, had informed uh, yesterday. The U.S. crude oil inventory had, uh, in fact, declined by about 9.9 .9 million barrels uh, for last week. Uh, what is also aiding oil prices is the American pressure on the buyers of Iranian oil. As far as uh, brokerages are concerned, we have yet another note, uh, bullish note rather, from Stancy in which they expect that uh, the low inventories could push WTI prices northward of uh, $75 per barrel. So that's as far as the oil markets are concerned. But if you look at the base metal space, the index itself snapped its uh, two-day decline. Most of the base metals did manage to uh, you know, up, uh, manage an uptake for themselves. Uh, the zinc cancelled warrants in fact surged 47%, uh, which was the most in four weeks. And uh, despite the fact that it did manage to surge 1%, zinc prices are still trading near a 10-month low. So zinc and lead gained more than 1% each. And we had tin which ended more than 1% down. Now, if you look at the Shanghai Futures Exchange, uh, most of these base metals are in fact trading with a positive bias. Uh, zinc and steel in particular focus have gained more than 1.5%, while copper and aluminum are trading marginally in the green. As far as gold prices are concerned, we've seen some bit of pressure for gold prices continue. And with yesterday, today's uh, or uh, today's six month low what has happened to gold is that it has now become the most oversold in over a year now
Among the stocks uh, one should track in trade today is Excite Industries, which has signed a joint venture agreement with the Swiss company Leclanche to build lithium ion batteries uh, for the Indian market. In fact, the uh, uh, production plant will be based in Gujarat. That's what the company has said. Additionally, Excite will be the majority shareholder of the JV and uh, the Swiss company will be the strategic minority shareholder. The module and battery pack assembly line will be operational by the second quarter of 2019 and uh, the other plant will be operational by mid-2020. So overall, uh, it will come on stream only by uh, FI 20, but that's one stock to watch out for. Uh, GMR Infra is another one on the list. Now it has been selected as the bidder to develop commercial port in Wysak. And this port is uh, to have an initial capacity of 16 MT, so watch out for that name. Uh, the third stock on the list is uh, Talwarkar's Better Value. Watch out for that name because the demerged entity Talwarkar's Lifestyles will be listed on exchanges uh, tomorrow. So let's see how this stock reacts today. Uh, you also have a couple of bulk deals. One is Z Media Corp, where promoter arm Infra and Utilities has sold 1.03% stake. Uh, the buyer is JSGG Infra Developers, which has bought that much uh, or equivalent stake. Remember last week, also on last Friday, uh, there was an exchange of uh, equity of uh, 1% or so in between these two entities itself. So that's a stock to watch out for. Uh, we also have Tasty Bite Eatables, where Jupiter India Fund has acquired 1.17% a percent stake so that's another stock to watch out for you might see some positive reaction there and then you have endurance technologies which will be meeting access mutual fund motila loswal mutual fund and a couple of other uh, potential investors today so that's all uh, that you need to track in trade today okay what is healthcare uh, an important uh, you know analyst uh, and a corporate uh, con call that happened in trade yesterday couple of take takeaways first of all you know as as of the earlier agreement uh, the bidding for uh, fortis healthcare had to be the bids had to be submitted by today now what they've said in the con call is that you know the bids will now be submitted only after submission of the audited results they took time to delay give the results and that's why they want that extra time to be given uh, they don't see much delay to coming in as far as these audited numbers are concerned they they see that happening over the next few uh, days. They haven't given a clear timeline, but they said it won't be any kind of, uh, it won't be weeks, but it'll be very, very soon. So that's uh, the, the key takeaway that's happened. Uh, so basically, uh, over the next few days, uh, we will come to have more clarity on uh, when, uh, when this will come in. The second part was uh, the brand. Now, Fortis and SRL brands are owned by the Singh brothers. The management has said that there is an agreement in which they pay three crores annually to the Singh brothers uh, to use uh, the Fortis and SRL brands. Uh, it's a nine-year agreement, and they are in year three, and they will do everything to protect uh, uh, this brand name uh, because uh, the deal uh, is clearly there. Apart from it, the other things that they spoke about uh, was, uh, you know, removal of uh, of Malvinder Singh as, uh, uh, you know, as the strategy initiative of the company he was named lead strategy initiatives of the company and they would want to recover all the assets and dues that are that are there uh, with Malvinder Singh back to the company uh, and they're saying they will take all the legal action necessary uh, to take uh, back whatever the company is needed uh, and finally on the RHT acquisition they said that they have till the end time till the end of the year before they actually go ahead and complete the entire deal the general direction is going to be towards more protection, more restriction, less trade, more uh, inability of U.S. producers to produce, which will mean less willingness of U.S. producers to hire and will hurt uh, the very workers President Trump is most focused on. So right now, this looks pretty awful. Why? Why would we be, in the name of national security, putting tariffs on Canadian steel that raise the price of steel for everybody who produces automobiles or everybody who's producing bridges over uh, rivers or strengthening the country's infrastructure? Why would we want to tax all of that in order to put a burden on Canada and what that's got to do with our national security is kind of inconceivable. Uh, so I have to say it doesn't look like a very good picture. But one thing we know with this president is things change quickly. And 
perhaps they'll, they'll get to a better place at some point. So far, the economic costs have been pretty limited, some warnings perhaps from companies. Do you see any concrete impact on the economy yet? I think it's too, I think it's too early. I think you do see some uh, signs of increased uh, uncertainty leading to delay in uh, investment plans. And I don't think that... Uh, there, that it's a trivial thing that when we deliver our threats, the market moves down by hundreds of points, which represents the destruction of hundreds of billions of dollars of wealth, at least on a temporary basis. Well, moving on to some more stocks to watch based on yesterday's delivery buying and selling. The first stock on the list, uh, that should be RBL Bank. Now, that was down about 2.5% uh, or a little bit more. Uh, and so delivery selling of nearly 160 crores. The delivery volume and the total volume both surged more than 150% as compared to its five-day average. Second stock to watch, that would be Tech Mahindra. Now, that was up about uh, nearly 4% in trade and saw delivery buying of more than 125 crores. The delivery volume, however, surged 68% and the total volume also surged. Uh, the third one uh, to watch out for, that would be ICICI Bank. Uh, Wednesday's fall was about 3.1%. Uh, delivery value was about uh, 366 crores. The delivery volume surged 65%, while the total volume surged just about 25% as compared to its five-day average. A big brokerage calls for the day. First we have is HSBC on HCL Technologies. Now the brokerage has raised the rating on the stock to buy from old and has also raised the target price to 1065 from 1050. Now though HCL Tech is expected to grow at a slower pace in financial year 2019 when compared to the top four IT companies, the different the, the valuation the discount for the valuation when compared to the large four IT companies is extreme according to the brokerage now if you see the brokerage also says that HCL is the cheapest stock in the Indian IT sector across the large and mid cap stocks and the discount could largely be because of the investor concerns related to the long term outlook for the infra space and over the logic behind buying the end of life IP product from IBM now second we have is Mothila Loswal on Tata Communications now, the brokerage has maintained its buy rating on the stock with the target price of 7.30 now. According to the brokerage, strong order book would drive revenue growth for the company going forward. Now, the brokerage is expecting the growth service revenue to grow at a compounded annual growth rate of 32% over FY18 to FY21. And as ATM transactions and cash supply have grown over the last two quarters, Tata Communications ATM business is expected to see, uh, see a recovery both in its revenue and EBITDA in financial year 2019. Now, the innovation segment of the company is expected to be a bit slow and contribute only 10 million US dollars to the top line in financial year 2019. Lastly, the earnings of the company which were lately hit would, is expected to recover from the second quarter of financial year 2019. Third, we have a Skotik on Colgate. Now, the brokerage has maintained its ad rating on the stock with a target price of 1300 rupees. Now, according to the brokerage, Colgate has not regained any market share that it lost to Patanjali so far. Also, the uh, underlying category wise volume growth is rising but at a slower pace for the Colgate. However, the company is hopeful of a rural recovery uh, going forward. On the cost side, the brokerage says that the price hike that the Colgate is going to take going forward will suffice the rise in input cost going forward. Lastly, it is expecting the investment in advertising to be higher for its flagship brand in the national segment. Lots to talk about over the course of the day, including crude oil prices, the fact that the rupee is nearing its all-time low, and of course, live markets. You'll find all of that and more on Bloomberg Quint Live. There are also several stories that are currently on the website that you can read. That's BloombergQuint.com. Jet Airways is offering up to 30% discount on its international flights and up to 25% discount on select economy class flights within the country. According to an emailed media statement, the discounted tickets will be on offer till the 30th of June. And the government has started discussions for the sale of Air India's iconic building in Mumbai to GNPT as part of efforts to raise funds for the airline. That's all you need to know going into trade today. Up next is Indian Open and it'll take you through market open. Thanks so much for watching. This is Bloomberg Quint.